Good morning and welcome everyone. Welcome to and thank you for joining the second webinar of this uh, second open call of the DAPSI project. As you know, DAPSI stands for uh, Data Portability and Services Incubator. It's a project uh, funded by the European Commission and H2020 program and is under the um, Next Generation Initiative Internet. So if you are applying to the second open call, uh, this webinar is for you. Uh, as you uh, can see on the agenda, uh, we have here uh, several uh, consortium members of the project uh, participating in this webinar to explain you everything you need to submit a successful proposal. So we will start uh, uh, talking about uh, what is DAPSI and we will have uh, uh, Sal Matteo, which is the project coordinator from the Valley Innovation Consulting, explaining all the details about DAPSI. Uh, then we'll have uh, Najme from Fronhofer uh, explaining uh, what are the data portability challenges to address in this second open call. Um, and then uh, we'll have Natalia from Zabal Innovation Consulting as well, uh, with uh, very important details about how to apply and submit a successful proposal. We'll have also uh, Augusta Radu from uh, EMT Starter uh, explaining uh, what the program that you will receive if you are selected, uh, the business support and technical support, uh, and the very uh, vibrant uh, and engaging ecosystem in which you will be uh, participating if you are selected. And uh, last but not least, Alfonso Pietro Paolo from Engineering uh, will explain all the infrastructure and tools that will be available for you. Uh, if you are selected, uh, and then we'll have a QA next section. So please uh answer uh, answer no uh, uh, post your questions on the q a box uh, uh on zoom uh throughout all the session and we will cover and answer them all at the end of the, the webinar uh, but please feel free anytime to to post your question and we will uh, see them all at the end of the session uh, another important information this webinar is being recorded and will be available on youtube um starting tomorrow uh, so, without further ado, I will invite uh, Sara Matteo to uh, join us and to um, explain to us what is uh, DAPSI all about. Thank you, Miguel, for the introduction. Now I will share my screen with uh, some slides to, to introduce you also about uh, the project in, in more detail. One second. Okay, uh, so uh, I'm uh, Sara Mateo and uh, I'm the project uh, coordinator. So I will give you uh, an overview of uh, DAPSI in a few slides before the, the further explanation uh, done by my, my colleagues. So uh, DAPSI, why DAPSI? Uh, well, um, there was a new regulation on the data protection on uh, May 2018. And uh, with this uh, new uh, regulation, Europe uh, tries to make easier for citizens their, the control of their personal data. For example, Article 20 refers to making easier for citizens to have the data which is stored with one service provider to be transmitted directly to another provider in an easy way. So uh, with this uh, GDPR uh, on, on one side and also with the uh, next generation internet initiative by the European Commission, an initiative that tries to make internet more open, inclusive, transparent, etc for citizens. With uh, these two uh, main components, we founded a DAPSI uh, under the uh, Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Programme uh, of the European Commission. So DAPSI is funded under NGI initiative and tries to foster the advanced research in the service and data portability field and how we uh, work on that, how uh, we um, support uh, this trend. Well, uh, we support researchers, SMEs, startups or innovators 
from all over Europe and uh, we support them with uh, funding. We offer up to 150,000 euros per project. But we don't just offer money, we also offer a pack of services with coaching and mentoring that will be uh, very valuable uh, in terms of technical and business development for the um, beneficiaries. The project started in the 2019th, it will uh, last for three years. And uh, during uh, these uh, three years of project, we will uh, launch three open calls. And now we have our second call open, so it's the, the time for you to apply. And we have a total of uh, 5.6 million euros to fund um, interesting projects. In this uh, second open call, we will distribute around 2.1 million euros from this total amount. So it's uh, a relevant increase of money compared to the first open call when uh, we uh, distributed around 1.3 million euros. And we are six partners from five countries. You can see here that we are all around Europe. We have F Success uh, based in uh, Ireland. Uh, they are in charge of the dissemination and communication in the project, and also they offer their uh, platform F Success for the submission of proposals. We have uh, from Hofer that is in charge of the scientific part of the project. They will uh, support you in uh, technical aspects. Also, engineering that it's based in Italy, it's uh, an IT company that will provide uh, infrastructure uh, to you. And also, we have uh, two friends partners, Institute Minds uh, Telecom, I'm IMT Starter, and Cap Digital that will uh, support uh, beneficiaries and the business related aspects. And finally, uh, we have uh, Thabala in charge of the coordination of the project and also the, the management of the open calls and uh, evaluation of the, of the proposals. So uh, this is uh, our consortium and um, who can uh, participate? Well, uh, it's a very open um, approach where any profile it's uh, it's welcome. Always you have the the skills and the knowledge to uh, propose a data portability related project. It's uh, it's okay. We are um, expecting proposals from internet uh, technologies, to researchers, innovators, developers, etc. And you can apply alone as a natural person or as a legal entity, linked to a legal entity, or uh, you can propose a consortium where uh, the, the, the group is uh, composed by natural persons and also legal entities. So any combination, both individual and collaborative, it's, uh, it's okay for us. And uh, also take into account that uh, depending on this uh, configuration, uh, depending on if you are a natural person or, a, or an entity or a consortium, the funding is, uh, is, uh, is different. So if you apply uh, alone as a natural person, you are a researcher, for example, applying on your own, uh, the maximum amount that you can receive for your project is 37 a uh, thousand and five hundred euros if uh, it's a group of uh, two or more uh, natural persons uh, the funding is up to seventy five thousand euros and in any other case if you are a legal entity or a consortium you can get up to one hundred and fifty thousand euros and well, uh, just to uh, give you uh, an idea of uh, what uh, we found it, uh, there is a, a list of 11 excellent projects that we funded in the first open call. Um, 
you can uh, check the the current funded projects we have uh, all info all the information about uh, them in our website in the hall of fame in the in the dapsi project website so you can see that we have a different kind of applicants for example you can see that uh, dips uh, proposes a digital immunization passport and this is um, uh, led by a group of organizations uh, two legal entities are working on that or uh, we have also uh, for example a single organization um, with prop for IT data that it's uh, based on the provenance of work querying and generation for interpretable and transparent data transfer. So uh, there we have uh, just uh, one entity uh, working on that. So uh, there are a lot of possibilities and well, I, I invite you to, to review these current projects. And well, this is uh, all from my side. Uh, I, I expect uh, now my colleagues explaining you more in detail other aspects about the, the program, if you are engaged, and also about how to apply, the kind of projects uh, we, we expect. So, well, I give the floor to the next uh, speaker. Thank you very much, Sarah. Yes, let's go deep into data portability, this hot topic in 2020, and it will be uh, not topic in 2021 as well. And we have with us uh, Najme from, from Norfolk to explain what are the data portability challenges to be addressed in the second open call. Okay, hello from also my side. Welcome to this presentation. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay, I hope everything is fine. Um, yeah, so my name is Najme. I'm from Fraunhofer IAIS in Germany, and uh, I will explain briefly about data portability challenges uh, in DAPSI. Uh, so we have uh, three main subdomain in data portability and one uh, kind of uh, other uh, subdomain that it, they, it, it does not feed into the three main subdomains. Uh, so the first one is service portability, uh, which empowers users to share their data with any service provider and host that they trust. And the second one is data interoperability and compatibility uh, to facilitate switches between the service provider. The third one is security and privacy uh, to ensure that these personal data are transferred in a secure way uh, during this transfer and there is, uh, during this uh, portability um, stage. And uh, as I said, there is also an, an open option uh, for the subjects that they, they, do, they do not fit in these three main uh, subdomains like data correction, data ownership, user education, for example, about this new regulation GDPR. Um, so in more detail, of, uh, what is this uh, service portability? Um, so a uh, service portability aims to make uh, data and identities usable and portable across services. And uh, by uh, making these uh, data and identities uh, portable, then, then the end users regain control and innovative new services. Um, they, they regain control and the, uh, the uh, new services can be made possible to the uh, end users. So what we expect from uh, the proposals is uh, you can introduce uh, the micro, micro scale alt alternatives and interoperable standards that can be universally deployed. And uh, what can you do? You can create or you can also enhance uh, the uh, open alternatives that uh, already exist, uh, for example, and, and people depend highly on it. For example, um, a lot of services that is offering by Google, like um, YouTube, a calendar, um, a lot of other services, or uh, for example, offered by Microsoft, like uh, Teams, or I don't know, uh, the, uh, the uh, Word and Excel, and um, other services that uh, they are um, highly, um, uh, they are highly used by a lot of users uh, these days. So, um, but this is very complicated task and um, 
uh, due to the limited time of participation in DAPSI, um, you, if you are applying uh, under this subdomain, you can create a fast version and uh, then um, it can be used by people in the community for future works and they can, they can build uh, their, um, their work um, on uh, your work and they can uh, enhance and improve um, these services. And the second subdomain is data interoperability and compatibility. Um, so um, environment one and two, um, they may have different data models and architecture. So when you are um, porting data from one environment to another, then this transfer uh, will be difficult. And um, our solution and our proposal is to use um, uh, common standard and shared vocabularies uh, for um, data interoper interoperability and compatibility. And um, you can all you should also um, consider fair principles. Uh, the FAIR principle is uh, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable data. Um, there are some challenges during this data transfer. Um, for example, designing a cross-domain data architecture that can be used um, among different uh, environments, it, it's, it's quite challenging. And using um, established and open standards and model are highly encouraged. And um, this is one of our main uh, focus in DAPSI. And uh, another challenge is the tools for data conversion from one format to another. For example, you can imagine that uh, environment one, um, it, is, um, it is offering data in JSON format and the other uh, environment, uh, it is uh, supporting data, for example, in RDF or something like that. And the third main subdomain is security and privacy during this transmission. Um, so uh, we expect that uh, if you are applying uh, in, in, under this subdomain, uh, you have secure data encryption and transmission during transfer of data, especially because it's a personal data, it's very important. And uh, full anonymization, uh, we expect that in, in, trans in transferring data and also ensuring correctness and integrity of data during the transfer. And if you have something in mind uh, that it is uh, related to data portability, but uh, you think that it does not fit uh, properly into the three main domains, subdomains, you can also um, apply under other subdomain, uh, for example, you ethical and legal issues about data portability, user education, data correction, data ownership, or even marketing of data portability solutions can be applied under this subdomain. Um, that's it, I think. And I see some questions, but we will answer it at the end of the session. Exactly. Thank you very much, Najmesh, for this uh, very important information. And now that uh, you potential applicants know what we have to address, let's talk with uh, Natalia from uh, Zabal Innovation Consulting to know how you can apply and, uh, and for a successful, to submit a successful um, application. Natalia, the floor is okay. yours. Thank you, Miguel. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, here. Well, my name is Natalia. I'm also from Zavala Innovation Consulting, and I'm gonna explain you how to apply to, to this uh, second open call of the DAPC program. Uh, well, if you want to, to participate, I will recommend a first and a basic steps that it's to, to read the guidelines and the, the facts, the frequently asked questions that we have in, in our website, uh, because, well, you will have all the, the information necessary to apply and, and it's important. Uh, the guidelines will give you an overview of the call, the eligibility criteria, the evaluation process, and well, all the information that you need to, to know, so please do it. Uh, then the, the second step is to think of a good idea in the data portability domain. Uh, we are looking for questions, challenges or solutions uh, in this field and, and this is also a key. Uh, and as it was just uh, presented by NACME, there are main areas identified but you can offer whatever you think that can be relevant for, for this program. 
Well, uh, how it works. Uh, we have a form ready for submissions that you can see in the f 6 platform, which is the, the official channel to be used. Uh, then in this f 6 form, uh, there are different sections to prepare the proposal. Uh, there is a first section with the proposal identification, a second one where you have to indicate the subdomain that you will address, uh, another section uh, for the administrative data about the, the participants, the applicants, and another participant in the case of a consortium. Uh, and then the section four is uh, for the proposal description. And um, finally, section five that contains some formal questions uh, like the declaration that you are in compliance with the open call or, or that the information that you submit is, is true. Uh, here in this picture, uh, you can see that there is a template that it's uh, mandatory. Uh, and this is very important. This document is a Word document and is also available in an open format, format with all the sections that you, sh you have to, to complete in the proposal. Uh, you have an extension limit of uh, seven pages and, and also in the document you have in, in blue text some guidelines uh, that describe what you have to include in each section. Uh, this is important because um, you have to, to know that uh, this, uh, this information that you have to, to complete is uh, related with the evaluation criteria. So if you miss some information that we expect, it will penalize in the evaluation. So please take this into account. And the last thing is uh, an additional template that you have to upload only in those cases where the consortium is large. In the FCCS uh, form, uh, it is prepared for a maximum of three natural persons and three legal entities. And if, it's the, if it is the case that, for example, you apply and you are a group of four individuals, uh, you will not have space in that form. So you will have to complete uh, this information about the participant in this, in this uh, extra a template. Uh, about the eligibility, I'm going to review the eligibility criteria, which means that uh, if you meet all the conditions that uh, you can be legally selected to participate in the DAPSI program, but in the case you don't comply with all the conditions, you will be automatically discarded and you will not be evaluated. So it is important to, to review these uh, eligibility conditions. Uh, the first one, uh, well, the applicants are asked to sign a, a declaration of honor at the proposal stage and later in the signature of the contract if they are selected, confirming that there is not a double funding and that there is enough operational capacity to execute uh, the work. It must be highlighted also that the projects with a research part and main work dedicated to tech development will be selected. So the project focused only on paperworks are not well, are out of the NGI scope. Uh, DAPSI encourage uh, proposals to that aim to create a viable uh, open alternative for the key proprietary service that depends on, for example, uh, Google or Microsoft. Um, Etc. Um, about the type of beneficiaries, Sarah has explained that uh, any natural person or legal entity is allowed to participate, uh, but there is an exception and it's for the large enterprise. Uh, they are excluded and they cannot participate because they are not in the objective of the program. Uh, the second thing is about the, the country of establishment or resident, establishment in the case of companies and resident uh, for the people applying as natural person. Uh, you have all the, the full list of the eligible countries described in the guidelines. Um, the language, uh, take into account that the official language for the application and the evaluation will be English. Uh, also notice that uh, no multiple submission is allowed. Only one proposal per applicant will be evaluated. And if you submit more than one proposal, only the last one will be considered. Also, for example, in the case of uh, individuals, you have to participate just in one proposal. It is uh, a condition for entities and individuals. Uh, also here we include that uh, there is an official submission system 
uh, and templates also. Uh, so the submissions should be done through these social systems uh, and not receive uh, your proposal, for example, by email. Uh, and we are not going to admit a proposal uh, that use uh, another template that is not uh, the official one. Uh, in relation to conflict of interest, applicants can cannot be, for example, DAPSI consortium partners or any entity to the consortium partners. And finally, the deadline. A proposal submit after the deadline will not be eligible. So please take into account that the 20 January at midday, we have the, the deadline for this open call. Well, uh, regarding the evaluation, there will be different steps. Uh, the first one will be the eligibility filter, where we will check the, the consortium, the eligibility conditions, and, and we will discard those proposals submitted by, uh, for example, uh, people who is based in an eligible country. Once this filter is done, the eligible proposal will be evaluated remotely by external evaluators, and, and each proposal will be evaluated by two experts. Um, and they will do it in relation to, th to three main areas. Uh, the, the excellence and innovation of the proposal with a 50% of the weight, the expertise and, and excellence of the proposed team with a 30% of the weight, and the project planning um, value for money with the 20% of the weight. Each of these criteria will be also evaluated from, from zero to, to five, in each main category, excellent expertise and excellent of the teas and project planning, will have a threshold of three out of five points. Uh, and finally, before the total score, there is also a threshold of uh, 12 points out of 15. Well, and then once the, the evaluation is finished, uh, there will be a consensus meeting. And as a result, uh, well, we will generate the ranking final list with the selected participants. Uh, this, this list will be finally approved by the European Commission, and then uh, we will proceed by with the communication of the result to the selected and non-selected participants. Uh, about the timeline for this uh, second open call, um, well, is, is the one that is shown in this image. We will close the call on the 20th January. Then there will be the evaluation process that I have just explained. And the communication of results is expected to be done by March. Uh, then the, there will be a process of subgrantee agreement preparation and signature with the, that will be done during March. And once the contract with uh, all the selected participants are finished, we will be able to start with the phase one of the program in April. Well, and just uh, to conclude, uh, I just give you the last message that it's that you have the, the open call ready and open for all your applications. You have it in, uh, the direct access to the application tool to do it easy. And just have into account that the application deadline is the next 20th January and that it is at uh, 11 uh, noon, it's midday, it's not at midnight. So please be careful also with this. Thank you very much, Natalia, for this very, very important information for our potential applicants. So I see we are receiving uh, questions uh, about the application process. So please stay, uh, stay with us until the end of the session. We will answer all the questions. Yeah. Um, and now we'll give the floor to Augustin Radu from EMT Starter to give us a, a sneak peek of what to expect in terms of uh, supporting program uh, that is offered uh, by the TAPSI project. Augustin, the floor is yours. Okay. Good, thank you very much, Miguel. Hello, everyone. I will share also my screen. I uh, think it works. So uh, I'm uh, Augustin Radu from uh, IMT Starter, one of the oldest business incubator in France, in the Paris region. Uh, so we exist since 21 years. I work here since 20 years. So. Uh, our focus is on uh, IT startups that are going from an idea to, let's say, more advanced projects. 
uh, we used to coach them, to mentor them. Uh, let's say that uh, we have this particularity is that the business incubator is attached to an engineering and the, and the business school that are on the same campus. So uh, all the interest to have an, uh, an incubator here. So we manage student projects, but also external ones that are coming to in our programs. And we are very happy and proud to be part of uh, this interesting program. Uh, so uh, I think you understood uh, we are in charge on the business part. So maybe there will be some terms that you never met. Uh, I'm saying all this because with the experience on the, uh, let's say the first batch of the project that we have that uh, some of them were 100% technical. So we, we will touch some things that are not obvious for you, but this is the whole interest by participating in this kind of program. Uh, so if I go a little bit deeper in detail of uh, what exactly we propose, uh, so as my colleague said, it will be two phases. Uh, so let's say that's focusing on the uh, business part in uh, phase one, you will get uh, 10 hours on online program. I will go in the next slide a little bit deeper on the subject that we will touch. And uh, the very interesting point is that you will get a mentoring session, individual ones, with uh, people that work with us and we used to work with them. So all of them, they are entrepreneurs, successful entrepreneurs, very well people. And uh, the idea of this uh, individual mentoring is to try to apply what you learn during the online programs and uh, go further, go forward on the um, on the business parts. And uh, as Nashmet said, uh, there will be there will be also um, a technical training on their side. And I would say all these are going in um, in parallel. So uh, during the um, we will launch this program uh, in April. Um, and I would say normally 18 startups will be selected um, and there will be at the end of the phase one, an evaluation day where you have to pitch uh, in front of the an advisory boards and uh, technical and business experts. So unfortunately, not all of you will get in the second phase where uh, you will also get Definitely it makes sense with the same mentors, another session. Once again, uh, the whole idea is to challenge you, but in the same time to help you to, to move forward with, with the business part, which is once again, I don't think it's obvious for, for all of you. And the whole idea is that uh, at the end of the phase two, the evaluation uh, that you get, it's uh, totally positive. Uh, so uh, for the online sessions, uh, I would say that we try to cover um, the, 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 the idea of the business model, what your market is. Uh, so we will start with uh, some, uh, some basics about the product market fits, which is okay. You have a very tech and interesting subject or even products. Is the market ready for that one? Are your clients ready to hear what exactly you want to sell, if it's something to sell? So uh, we start by saying, in fact, basically, what is the solution that you are trying to solve? And after that, transform this solution in a, in a, in a, in a product. Uh, in the same time, you have to experience, which means that you try to do some POCs with maybe some of the, your future clients. And uh, well, some people say, well, yes, but we don't have clients. And the whole idea is also to help you to say what will be uh, the strategy to, to, to network, what will be the strategy to, to find new people. And uh, the interesting point is that each of these, uh, let's say, uh, online trainings are very, uh, well, it's not just a, a person that it's explaining you what you have to do. It's very hands-on. And each time we are asking you to make a deliverable, uh, which definitely will help you to, to go further in, in this, uh, let's say, on, on those subjects. And there is very, there is also, and this one will be a base 
for the discussion that we you will have with uh, with your uh, with the mentor once again all of my mentors understand what's uh, the what tech is because all of them they uh, create startups company and most of them they resold their companies to to to, to big groups so uh, they know what technology is and how to start from a technology to to develop a company uh, behind that will not be adapted to, to all the projects because not all of you you will uh, you will go through this some of them they will be definitely only let's say r d project but once again it makes sense that you take some value from this project that can go also through your uh let's say schools or business or uh, research centers etc and i think as to to, to to what we try to do is move forward with 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 your technology so uh there's some work is not just the participation it's very important because once again we set uh, some kpis that you still have to achieve but uh, let's say that uh, as we do all the time, we adapt uh, all our methods to your projects and let's say the, the level of the development of uh, your, let's say for future product or even only technology. So uh, this is on my side. I will be very happy to reply on some questions. Once again, very focused on the, on the business part. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Augustin, for uh, explaining us uh, all the um, mentoring and coaching uh, support that is offered within the, the, the program. Actually, the um, applicants from the selected from the first open call uh, have been really uh, appreciating the, all the support. So uh, I think we have a really good incubation program offered here. So uh, last but not least, we will go now through uh, the last point of the webinar. Uh, to uh, know a little bit more about the infra infrastructure and tools that are offered. Uh, so uh, please, Alfonso, welcome. The floor is yours. Thank you, Miguel. This is Alfonso Pedro Paolo on behalf of Engineering, one of the largest IT company in Italy. And this is a very quick overview of um, infrastructure and tools offered by the DAPSI project. Uh, indeed, uh, once you join uh, the project, sorry. Once you join the project, you will be able to uh, use a free cloud infrastructure based on OpenStack and Fiber technology. You will be supported by a specific ticketing system based on Redmind. And you will be trained through specific webinars, documentation, tutorials, and through an ever-growing knowledge base. About the cloud infrastructure, you will be basically able to create and manage virtual machines, create images, containers, security rules, and play with fiber generic neighbors that are basically a piece of software available in a free catalog that you can put together to boost the innovation of your solution. About the support tool, there is a Redmine installation where you will be able to create a ticket and keep track of the different issues. About the knowledge base, it is a repository where will be stored all training materials and specific DAPSI documentation, articles and publication on data portability field. So this is a very, very quick introduction, but of course, uh, dedicated uh, webinars and training uh, will follow on the usage of such tools and uh, infrastructure. Thanks, Miguel. Thank you, Alfonso. Thank you very much for this brief explanation about the tools and infrastructure that we have to offer within the program as well. So without further ado, we will go now to the Q&A section of this webinar. Um, let me just share yeah, the screen. So we have received 15, 17, 16 uh, questions so far. So we will go through them uh, one by one uh, to answer them all. So the, we will start from the, the first one, and it's a quite long one, but it's uh, very enthusiastic. 
So from Matthias, hello, uh, very happy this new call is happening. One question, is, is it strictly and only about data portability, uh, Article 20, or can it be about personal data sharing? For instance, the European Commission Data Space through the Data Governance Act will use data sharing services that will allow people to manage their rights and consents on data sharing and will allow organizations to share data between themselves. We are thinking about building a software to optimize and trace the legal models and contracts based on the Citra rulebook of this data sharing will fall under the security and privacy cap. It's so not uh, only about data portability and more about uh, human-centric data sharing real consent. Is that still okay? Is it completely in line with the DAPSI uh, philosophy and objective? Just not uh, legally speaking about only portability, but about data sharing in general. So I think this question maybe is for Najme. Um, I think so, yeah. Let me uh, provide my answer. So um, actually in, in DAPSI, we are mainly um, focused on data portability uh, issue. So data sharing is not data portability. Um, and the, you, you said that your uh, project or your idea would fall under security, security and privacy. And I have to uh, hear, uh, uh, I have to emphasize that uh, security and privacy in DAPSI is only security and privacy that is related to data transfer. Uh, it's not the security in general, it's security during the transfer of the data. Um, so um, yeah, so your, your use case should be uh, some data that exists in some place and it, it, is, uh, it is planned to be uh, ported to another environment or another place. Um, if you can think of privacy uh, in, in, in this uh, case, so for example, you are transferring some data and you have to uh, consider security and privacy during this transfer, then it will, it will fit into DAPSI, but not in general. So it's not about data sharing in general. I, I hope that it answers your question, but you can also send us an email uh, if you have more questions or more doubts. Yeah, so the email is dapsi at ngi.eu for all questions. So next one. Um, in the category security and privacy, do you only consider uh, personal data or also industrial M2M data application where security is relevant? Uh, again, um, it's not security in general. It's security uh, during the transfer of the data. So um, in, your, in your proposals, you have to show that uh, there is um, some data that needs to be transferred to another place and to another environment. And uh, you have to show that um, your solution is applicable in data portability uh, uh, for the future uh, work. And you can, you can apply in only one of the subdomains. So for example, you can apply in security and uh, privacy subdomain, but it should be uh, related to uh, porting data and it's not in general. Um, so yeah, and we highly, uh, we highly consider personal data um, because we are relying on GDPR. So uh, yeah. I, I hope that answers your question. But again, if, if you provide more detail about your idea, you can send us an, an email. Okay, thank you, Najme. Uh, next question, I think uh, for Natalia. Um, the first one is, can we remove the first page completely and start from cover page? So a question uh, regarding the, the yeah. proposal template. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the, the first page is just like the, the, the instructions to, to how to to complete the this template, but then you have to start to start in the the cover page and and you can delete all these extra guides in in blue color. It is also explained in this first page that you can delete. Okay, so it it's actually answers the second question uh, regarding the text in blue. Yes, it can be deleted. Um, so next question. I have a question about the evaluation process. We applied on the first open call and we have received quite a devastating score, including in the team section. We have got below three, there are two. Uh, that was very strange because in the team there were two persons, myself and another one, 
the other person is heavily involved in project with AI. He is an university professor, has a lot of writings, etc. Probably one of the best programmers in Europe. Myself, I have 20 years of programming experience participating on international informatics uh, content. The National Olympics in Romania. I have developed a tremendous amount of project, managed an IT company that made 15 million US dollars exclusively because of my work. Uh, now, if this team doesn't uh, get the minimal threshold of three, there is any reason to try at this session of DAPSI. Uh, who would like to uh, answer this question? Uh, maybe uh, Sara or... Uh... Yes, yeah, I can uh, answer this question. Well, um... I don't exactly uh, know uh, the proposal, but I, of course, I encourage you to submit again the proposal if you think you, your team uh, has all the needed uh, skills and knowledge uh, for that. Uh, try again, try to improve this section with uh, as much information as possible in the space you have for this. Um, and also I uh, recommend you um, to provide um, any information about um, projects or activities very linked to the data portability field. So perhaps you, your team has a, a lot of experience, but it's relevant to know the specific experience that applies to the, the, the project you are uh, submitting. So yeah. This is what I recommend. And also this year, there's a new question in the themes section. This is to know your motivation, why you apply to, to DAPSI. So this is a new question in this section where you can uh, really uh, defend uh, why uh, you should be selected. So, well, the, the section is a bit different this year. So uh, there is uh, room for, uh, for improvement. Thank you, Sarah. Next question. Can one proposal apply to more than one challenge? Maybe Natalia or Sarah? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, the idea is just to, to select a, a challenge and you have, a, well, the, the challenge are not a, are all aligned, we can say, uh, and you have also that other um, part for, for other different challenges that are not those that are defined. Uh, so if you can select one, it's, it's better. And if you have uh, questions about in which one uh, your proposal should, should be selected, uh, you can send uh, a bit, uh, explain what are your, your idea of project, and we can guide you with this uh, selection. I will add uh, something to, to Natalia's uh, explanation. Uh, also, if you, for example, uh, yeah, it's better to select a, a topic, but if you, uh, if you think that you are addressing more than one uh, topic, uh, you cannot submit more than one proposal. It's not possible to submit two proposals um, because only the last one submitted will be considered for evaluation. So if uh, you think you are uh, addressing more than one uh, topic. Um, it should be <clears throat> all explained. Sorry, sorry. <clears throat> it should be all explained in the same proposal. Thank you for the um, explanation. And um, uh, next question regarding the, the template as well. Proposal section three point one team composition as for explanation of team experience. However, the table of team participants takes more than half of the page. There is very uh, little space to explain the experience and it cannot fit in. Can we attach team members CVs or what other means can be uh, used to explain the team experience? Mm, Natalia, yeah, well, you want to? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the idea of this section is just to, to, to provide a short summary and, and explain here the, the relevant experience of the, of the team members with not uh, so much detail. But uh, in this table, there is also a, a, well, a column where is the, the LinkedIn profile or, or any other uh, uh, 
link that you can include here with with all your experience and and everything uh, more explained so the, the the best way is to to include here the the link with your uh, linkedin link so the evaluators will consult uh, any depth here okay next question regarding the the application process May we submit the proposal in open document text ODT format? Uh, yeah, this is uh, something new in this second open call, and uh, you can do it. You can you have the, the template in in the doc uh, format and also in ODT format, uh, but uh, you should submit it uh, in PDF. Yeah, and you can access the template, uh, ODT template yeah. in the dabsy.ngi.eu uh, uh, slash apply. You have the, um, the document available to download and edit from there. Um, can we resubmit a revised version of an application that was submitted in the, uh, the open call one? Uh, yeah, you can. Um, uh, you have to indicate it in the in the proposal when you submit it to have it into account. Uh, but yeah, of course, you can apply. Uh, you you should have into account uh, all the comments from the evaluate evaluation of the first open call. Uh, try to improve uh, those aspects and yeah, and try in this second call. Okay, thank you, Natalia. So we have a question now for uh, Augusta. What is the demolition pitch? Um, maybe you can find it a bit weird. Uh, demolition pitch. It's like uh, something that you present in front of investors. Well, in this case, it will not be the case because let's say that we already invest in your project as soon as you get the first part of your money. Uh, the idea of this pitch is uh, to see exactly what happened in your project uh, since the beginning. So this will happen almost after six months of the beginning of the program. Uh, so in this pitch, what are we expect is that you have to cover, uh, let's say, the technical part and also the business parts. So you have to present uh, and will be quite short. Uh, what have you done uh, in front of a jury, as I said, uh, composed by uh, our boards that uh, we engaged in this project and also experts in the business and uh, the tech parts. And uh, yeah, there will be, let's say, an evaluation of uh, what have you done during this first period. Thank you, Augusta. We, we call demolition pitch. I know that uh, you can you can be scared of that, but let's say that, that this is a this is the way that we call it. Thank you. Uh, next question: Is it correct that not all the projects will be provided with the MNC services? If so, which are the criteria for this selection? Um, I think it refers to mentoring and coaching services. Uh, if so, um, well, all the selected teams uh, that engage uh, DAPSI are provided with this kind of support. Money, the funding, and also these uh, services. I don't know if they, they are talking about this. I believe so, yeah. Um, if not, please, uh, I want to ask another question. We provide a little bit of detail, but if that was it. Uh, it's, uh, uh, so, next question for Augusta. If a tech uh, is developed, always support for bringing it out to market? Um, very good question. Uh, it's true that most of the time, uh, the vision that you bring in, it's uh, very technical. Uh, and uh, I would say most of the time you think that people are looking for this one or most of the time, they are trying to solve their own problem. So uh, that's why we call the product market fits. So uh, the whole idea is that we will bring you some keys and mostly a methodology to try to transform the tech that you have in a product. And uh, well, I will not go in right now because it can be very long, but uh, the whole idea it's 
let's say to think a little bit different than only techies is uh, well try to figure out what maybe your future clients needs are and try to respond all these at all these needs at, or at least a part of them with the technology that you start developing or you have already developed. So this is the whole idea and the whole process, even if you're in your mind, will be analyzed and uh, worked uh, for, for to replying to this, let's say, key question. Good, thank you. Uh, I think we have now a question for Alfonso. Uh, we already started working on our idea and have been using Amazon Web Services hosting service. Can we continue to use that or, have, or do we have to use the infrastructure offered by Dapsy? Of course, you can continue using your own. We highly recommend to use our infrastructure so that we can support you and guide you and so on. But if you have uh, your own infrastructure, uh, don't worry, you can continue using uh, your own. Um, for instance, you can use uh, the, our infrastructure just to uh, as test bed. Uh, uh, up to you. Thank you, Alfonso. Next question. For section 4.2, value for money uh, of the template, uh, we should prepare a budget for the two phases, nine months. Should we distinguish FR expenses related to the first phase and the second phase? Uh, Natalia, do you want to answer this one? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Uh, well, the, the idea here is, uh, well, there are like two different uh, parts. One, that it's uh, to indicate the number of, of person month, of the people involved in the project for the whole nine months of the project, but uh, it's not necessary to, to distinguish between the two phases, but uh, the, the other part of the budget uh, here you have to distinguish uh, different cost categories like uh, personnel, equipment, travel, and other cost. But uh, yeah, it's for the nine months, but it's not uh, necessary to distinguish the, the phases. Thank you for the explanation. Next question. Shall we uh, specifically explain how do we pretend to use DAPSI tools and infrastructure on the proposal? I can answer. Uh, there is no need to explain this uh, on in the proposal uh, that you submit. Uh, there is not a question about this. Next one. Can our idea fall under two categories, data sharing slash portability and data cleaning part of other segment? Um, yes, you can choose, uh, for example, um, interoperability and others, or you can choose uh, two. Uh, it's up to you. It depends on uh, what your idea fit into. Yeah, you can choose. Thank you, Najme. Next question. Um, thank you for your answer. If we still have time, it is about the legal compliance of the data transfer. In the guidelines, such topic is described in the Security and Privacy Act only this data transfer is not only triggered by portability, but also by consent. consent. Does that fit? I guess this is uh, related to the question we answered, right? Um, so if I'm correct, um, yeah, I mean, if you can show in the proposal that the uh, security and privacy, um, the, the solution that you are uh, proposing for the security and privacy, uh, they are useful for transferring of data. Of course, consent is also very important and we don't have problem. Uh, and it, we, we encouraged actually um, the, the solutions that highly depends on the consent of the end users. Um, so I, my only concern is that you show that this is related to uh, transferring the data. Great, thank you. Another question, what if you already have security and privacy as well as data interoperability? Will you then apply in service portability only with info that the others are covered as well? Um, yeah, I mean, if, for example, you can say that uh, we are designing a service uh, repla uh, for, for as a replacement, for example, for Google Calendar, like you can show that um, uh, in your new service uh, or in, the, in your new software, the people can easily export uh, their data from Google Calendar and they can import in your uh, service. So this is completely service portability. And uh, if you show that, it's more than enough for our program. Thank you. Another question. 
can the uh, leads of the project get paid as part of this? Uh, it may be a very small amount as uh, uh, or, medium, or just to take care of their basic uh, expenses. So question about budget. Well, I, I can answer. Well, uh, we offer uh, a lump sum, um, uh, uh, an amount of up to 150,000 euros, and it can uh, be used to cover the personal cost of the team dedicated to this project. Also, you can uh, afford uh, equipment uh, costs or um, uh, other, other things uh, that you need to carry out the project. But um, so we can cover the main uh, costs of your uh, proposed project. Also, it, uh, it, it can be the case that you are uh, working on a very, very big project and the funding that we offer uh, will just cover a small part of this bigger project. So this is also OK. In terms of uh, uh, budget, uh, there are no uh, so many restrictions. The only restriction or uh, limit that you should consider is uh, subcontracting. In general, um, uh, subcontracting uh, should be uh, not very high in your budget if you foresee subcontracting, because we expect that all the uh, skills needed for the project should be within the uh, staff within the team that uh, works uh, directly in the project. So this is the only uh, restriction. Thank you, Sarah. So we are reaching the last question uh, as for now. Uh, please elaborate on the open source part. Sarah, do you want to um, uh, elaborate on that? Do, I, think, I mean, it should be uh, about the use of open source and. Yes, well, uh, I will uh, say uh, the, the basic things, but perhaps uh, Najme uh, can also help. Uh, well, we uh, try uh, to select projects that are using free and open source licenses and open standards, and also that delivers open source results. Why? Uh, because we, um, we expect to uh, to contribute to the community and uh, give the opportunity to others in the future to uh, continue contributing. So um, we consider very, very uh, useful and necessary to, uh, to work on open source uh, aspects. Yeah, I, I also agree with Sarah. I mean, we, we highly encourage open source, um, like except that, for example, um, your company or your um, consortium that you're working for, it forbids that. Uh, but uh, for using standards, uh, it is uh, actually, um, it is mandatory to use open standards because if you use a closer standards, um, then it will be no use for the community. Uh, to use that standards. Um, and um, as I said, uh, for example, if you remember um, the, um, the example that I said about Google Calendar, if, for example, if you are um, designing a new service, uh, then if it's not an open source, uh, then because in nine months you cannot deliver a mature software or mature service. So um, if it's not open source, then uh, in future people, they don't, they don't have a possibility uh, to work on your service to improve that. And um, yeah, so um, yeah, we, we, I would say that uh, we highly encourage that and accept that it is forbidden by your legal entity. Thank you, Najme. Next question. If some of the team members do have their own companies, paying them to their companies instead of paying them a salary within the applying company. Is it considered subcontracting? Okay, let me read the, the question uh, carefully. Well, I don't know if I understand the, the question properly. Uh, the idea is that the people involved in the project is part of the company staff. They are employees. Uh, depending on the country and the national um, uh, law, uh, there are countries where 
different kind of uh, contracts or collaborations are possible. So uh, I think that if you have doubts about if uh, people that are uh, paid by your company should be considered subcontracting or staff, please send a specific uh, question with uh, details uh, to the um, email address that you have uh, in, the, in the screen and uh, we will help you because uh, it depends. We, we have to check it with the Horizon 2020 rules, okay? This is the same that applies under Horizon 2020 uh, rules. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, hello, is enterprise individual enterprise uh, at the whole name considered subcontracting if working on the project? Thank you. I think this is like a mix of French and yeah, I, 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 <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I would say uh, hello to Anonymous, by the way. Um, what we consider is the project, no, not really who is working with who. Uh, once again, the finance that you receive will be on the individual, as Sarah said, or on the company. Uh, I, I mean, if you are working with uh, someone else, I would say this is your problem. But what we are looking is the people that are involved in the project and or are paid by the company that will receive the money uh, from, uh, for, from us. So this is the way that we, we look for. The way that you manage, I would say it's almost your problem, but we want to see it's people on the project. Okay, we have another question uh, regarding this topic. Hello, uh, is freelancing a contract for the company considered to be outsourcing? Um, again, uh, this is specific cases to evaluate if uh, it can be considered uh, people in the company or subcontracting, please um, send the, the details by email and provide as much information as possible about the kind of uh, contract or collaboration that you have with uh, this person or this company, and we will uh, assess the, the specific case. Yeah, yeah, I think you, uh, regarding this question, the overall message is the, the core activities and the core development should be done by the people who, who are applying. Uh, that, that's the main thing. Uh, another question. Hi, uh, when I assume that my project needs a high amount of marketing and PR for the target market, but I would like to subcontract all those graphics and explain videos, can I do this via the DAPC budget? Maybe I can answer. Uh, the question is no. What we are looking, it's uh, if you get the money, it's about your whole project, not only one side of your project. So uh, our evaluation criteria is not uh, that you will use this money in very specific points. It's uh, we, we look globally what the project is. It's, uh, did you add address, let's say, our data portability as we uh, ask for. And well, after that, I mean, it's a good thing for us if you can see that it's not just a technology, it goes farther. But once again, we are not focusing on a very straight point that will be, uh, as you said, uh, I don't know, doing some graphics or explaining videos that you will subcontract with another company. So the, the answer is no. We are looking at, at the global project, not only on one side of the project. Okay, thank you. And we are uh, reaching the uh, last question, I guess. So uh, can we employ people specifically for the project? Yes, of course, uh, it's uh, perfectly possible. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you all for the, the questions and thank you all for the, the answers. Uh, do we have one more? Yes, one more question. So, uh, may open source be the 100% of the project output? Uh, uh, no, as I said, um, using open standards is mandatory. And if you have, if you are using uh, a, a kind of a new standard that is not open, you should perfectly justify it. Uh, for example, you, you should existing open standard, establish a standard that exist in the community, they don't, um, they don't answer 
uh, the host has asked to start your video. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, um, so you can say that, that all the existing standard, they, they, they don't satisfy our needs. So that's why we are, um, we are introducing new standard, but this new standard should also be open. I mean, if it's not open and if it is closed in your company, then it will be no use uh, for, uh, for the community. But as I said, don't mix open source with open standards. So open source is not 100% mandatory, um, but you should also justify what it's not, why it's not open source. And um, I would say that uh, the projects that are not open source and if they cannot justify why it's not open source, they may not have a good chance at, at uh, being accepted. Thank you, Najmeh. And I think we uh, answered all the questions, which were uh, a lot. Thank you very much for uh, your interest. I think we have another one. And yes, we have another one. Uh, <laughs> Ella, is freelancing considered to be a is freelancing contract for the company considered to be freelancing? Uh, well, uh, I think we, we already discussed that. It will depend on the, the country and etc. And then uh, as long as the core development is not done outside uh, the company. I think you, you are good. Sarah, any? Yes, for these kind of questions, please uh, write an email with more uh, explanation than, than just uh, one sentence to uh, make us understand the specific case uh, you, you have. Okay. Yeah, thank you. And I think that's it. So thank you very much to all the, att the attendees that stick with us until the end of the video. Thank you very much for the, the speaker, Natalia, Augusta, Sara, Anajme, and Alfonso. It was a pleasure to uh, be with you today, this morning. Uh, best of luck for all the applicants. Uh, don't forget the, the deadline, uh, 20 January at noon. And um, I'm looking forward for your applications and uh, to work with you uh, in this uh, 2021 uh, year. So uh, thank you very much and uh, have a nice day. Goodbye.